Okay. Uh, I have a new. I have a new thing to show you all. Uh, okay, I have a new thing to show you all that I just worked on. Um, so you've seen me do the Vive Tracker where I pick up the uh, tracker and like move it around like a camera and Unreal does it in real time. The, uh, the problem with that is what we really want to do is record it. So when I pick this up and move it, I want Unreal to track how it moves so that I can save that and render it out later at a higher quality. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this thing called the take recorder. And I'm going to use that in conjunction with the sequencer and the movie export queue. In fact, why don't we put them all together and then just go from left to right because this is the order you process the, process them in the take recorder takes like just takes live takes you do it once record it again 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 and then the one you like you go into the sequencer and you can like uh tweak it a little bit and then the movie render queue is like the final good pass that you uh like export at a high quality i'm actually going to put this back here because that was a dumb idea because i need access to all these settings uh so quick overview uh i have a camera in the scene somewhere right there I'm gonna pull back a little you can see the camera and uh, if we play this moves it around that's exactly what we expected to see so what I did is I uh, added a source and I searched for this it's called the VP camera uh, and it's already added so I added the camera and that means that any uh, keyframe or any properties that change in this, it's going to record. If there are multiple things moving, you'd record them too. And then these are all the possible things that can record, like does the visibility change, uh, attach, I don't know what that means. All I recorded was transition. Transition meaning does it rotate, does it move up and down, and focal length. Um, focal length is like the zoom, how far in or out it is zoomed. And I actually want uh, manual focus distance. So I want, all, I want to track all these things because they might change as I'm playing. So the way it would work to do this is you hit play to like start the game engine running. And then um, I'm going to hit record and click on this window to give it focus. And then I'm just going to record. And I'm going to pull the trigger to like change focus as I move around. Quick motion. You see that like blur. Whoop. This is good. I just want lots of stuff going on. Oh, I seem to be in, in, in like a pole. Can I focus on this? No, it's too close. All right. And when I'm done, I'm going to hit escape. That was quite long, and uh, I did it long to prove a point. Uh, the point is that you can do it long. Now, I might have made a mistake in here. Um, okay, so one thing I learned is that this object is already in the scene, and I had to set this to possessable out of spawnable or project default. Things just don't work if it's not set to possessable. I don't know why. This is for future Jacob or future lost soul so this button here this actually clears the take so i could immediately film another one if i didn't think that one went well and it increments the take number every time so you can just review them after but what i'm going to do is review the last recording with this button and then uh if i just hit play let's see what happens okay cool uh i'm going to make it bigger and i'm going to click this lock to viewport And then, yeah, that looks like the take I just filmed. So here's a problem that I encountered. Um, if I hit play, the game will start. And then if I hit play here, it's not playing anymore. It's following this motion tracker. And what's happening is these are fighting. 
for whatever reason, when you play back a scene, it's not like a movie recording. It's like replaying a game. But the problem is, is I wired this up. So I actually have to go in and unwire it for this part to work. Now there's probably a proper way to do it, but I don't know it yet. Luckily it's easy to unwire. I just go in and under the event tick, I break it. I break the connection. So no problem, compile that. And let's just do a test. I'll hit play. And then uh, here. Uh, I think I want to be viewing in the camera. Let me let me back up and so I <laughs> this is strange. Like there's a camera in this scene. Why? I'm the camera. Uh, what? I don't really know what's happening. I think, so when you press start in a game, sometimes the player, the you're a player when you start the game, you spawn into existence. Now I thought I had eliminated that, but maybe not. What I can do, however, is go in here and click on this camera and just say hide it in the game hide in game. So even if we have these double cameras, uh, we shouldn't see them anymore. All right, so play and then, all right, so now we don't see the double camera. There's probably a proper way to do this that I don't know about, but this is working. This is not overriding anything. And that looks just like the take I took. So yeah, this is good enough. So I'm gonna hit stop. Now, what I learned is that if you're not playing, even if the motion controller is wired up, this part will still work because the game has no input like overriding it. The problem is when you go to render it, the game does run. So you have to make sure you can hit play and this playback queue needs to work before you can render things out. So this seems like it's working. I'm gonna to go to the render queue and I'm gonna grab the take that we just took. And I think it's take 10. And, um, all right. Uh, yeah, let's just render it to J a JPEG sequence. There's obviously better ways to do this, but um, you wanna to render to like an EXR format. JPEG is lossy. This is just for demo. Okay. Why? Why, 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 why? That should have worked. What the frick? I feel like it might be spawning a camera. No. Wait, let's click this again. Why sequence? Scene one. Oh. Oh. I just did the wrong sequence. I think we're actually on nine. Uh, let me just delete this. So I think that scene one. I think I clicked on I think I think I just clicked on the wrong thing here so let's push render local cross our fingers okay the number of frames is more that looks good all right that is the motion we're looking for and I love that this is how fast it's rendering it's rendering uh, I think it's rendering, I guess it's rendering slower than real time, which is fine, but the quality is really nice. Uh, but it's it's still way faster than like, you know, Blender where it took like an hour per frame. Um, 
let's have a look at our, wait, where's my mouse? Let's have a look at my uh, GPU and such. Oh, it's not even that taxing on the GPU. That's weird. I don't know what's bottlenecking it. I can't see anything possibly bottlenecking it. All right, so it's done. And then uh, if we go into DaVinci Resolve, we can actually import the sequence. Um, and if you had been recording on the camera at the same time, you would have footage that matches up. And uh, assuming, you know, assuming that everything kind of matches up the right way, which might take some fine tuning, it you should be able to take the video you just did, comp, uh, green screen key it out, put it against the background, and then it should look like you're there. All right, uh, let's just go into this untitled project. Media. And then, uh, I think we just, scene one, 10. What if I just add this folder? Will it detect? Ah, sweet, see? Okay, so let's, can I full screen this? Perfect. And let's just hit play. feel like I, it looks a little fake. I think there's like motion blur settings and stuff that you're supposed to set. Um, but I'm, I don't know, like I'm pretty pleased with it for, for where it's at right now. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, okay, so that's... That's uh, the, the, the full end-to-end, -end, well, not the full end-to-end -end process, but the end-to-end, -end, like, from from motion tracking to to get it to a spot where you can composite it. Oh, all right. Thanks.